Thank you, Disney Plus. Thank you. <laughs> this movie is actually really funny. Mulan. Oh, if only if I could afford seeing it on the platform. Let's just pray and hope I'll be able to see it in a limited screening in a cinema somewhere. Oh well, guess there's the original. Time to watch it. Look at me. I could never watch the remake of Mulan. On Disney Plus. The quarantine has prevented me from watching that movie. But not entirely. If I could find a limited screening there. In a cinema, I'd be fine. Do 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 do. Why am I looking forward to a live-action Disney remake? Why is Disney live-action Mulan look enticing? Somehow I got hyped up. No matter how much remakes usually sucked, now we know the release date for live action Mulan! <coughs> now we know the release date for live action Mulan! <laughs> I'm conflicted. What should I do? Think, Alan, think. What would the movie say in this kind of crisis? Pour the tea to bring your family honor. <sighs> that counts my nerves. Does that solve the problem? Oh, I just remembered that something that Mulan's father said. All these flowers have bloomed, but look, this one, if you can see it, hold on. This flower is yet to bloom. When it does, it'll be the most beautiful of them all. For live action Mulan, I hope that's the case. But for now, let's get to reviewing the original animated masterpiece to show what the remake has to live up to. So in case you're an uncultured swine, let me paint you a picture. In that immaterial mind of yours, my dear viewers, Beautiful ink and watercolor open up with the Chinese music. We transition to the Great Wall of China from said minimalistic ink. You know how the Chinese do it, quite stylistic. A lone soldier walks on patrol when suddenly a carnivorous bird jerks off his helmet. The soldier's like, hey, birdie be like, Caca! hook, flies onto the wall, not Captain James Hook, I'm afraid. Soldier looks over and goes like... Many hooks come flying from the other side of the wall. Soldier years, we're under attack! Huns come climbing up. Huns coming through the door just like they're minding their own business like they own the place. Try to come up, he climbs a ladder, gets to the fireplace, looks up. Intimidating Hawkeye leader Sean Yu. Literally Hawkeye. Or maybe a cyborg like Geno's from One Punch Man. Soldier lights the fire. From a distance, there's another fire, and another fire, and another fire. The soldier says, now all of China knows you're here. Shan Yu takes the flag, burns it. Perfect, he says. Yes, from that opening, you can tell this is, uh, not your... Granny's... Disney film, or however that phrase goes. The emperor of China calls China to action. The Huns are invading and they need as many men as possible. In the emperor's words, the smallest grain of rice could tip the scales. We are then introduced to Fa Mulan in a small town village. Mulan is the daughter of an old soldier who has long seen his days in battle, as signified by his petrified leg. She has now come of age where she must train to be a housewife to bring honor to her family, as well as make some good quality tea. <sighs> You can complain all you want about my tea ceremony in the opening of this video, but it went much better than Mulan's tea ceremony in this movie. Alas, despite a supportive family, a lucky cricket, and a song that could rival Keep Young and Beautiful, Mulan simply fails 
with this ceremony, with this rites of passage even, and forcing her to think, who is she deep down inside? What worth is she if she's so far failed to be an effective housewife? Who is she deep down inside? Her father beautifully encourages her that she is a late bloomer, like a late blossoming flower on a blossom tree. It may be late, but when it blossoms, it'll be the most beautiful of them all. Right as he says this, duty calls. Mr. Peng from Kung Fu Pen, I mean the Emperor's assistant, declares to the village, the Huns have invaded China and we need as many men as possible. He calls out a list and calls out Mulan's father. Mulan pleads not to let her father go, but her father takes up the offer nevertheless. Even though, due to his crippled leg, he is in no condition to fight whatsoever. Maybe a few jib jabs before he gets a strain in his leg or something like that. Mulan finds herself in a conundrum as she sits beneath the great stone dragon in the pouring rain. Obviously, it's an honor to fend off forces from evil deeds, but at the same time, she wants to protect her father. She doesn't want him to be killed. That's when Mulan has an idea. An awful idea. Mulan had a wonderful, awful idea. Cue the music. To some epic music, she replaces the invitation enrollment scroll with her own comb. She takes a blade and cuts her hair. And from your lips she drew the hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, sorry, wrong, wrong, sorry. She tied up her feminine waist. She got out her father's armor. She rides her trusty steed. And her family realizes too late that Mulan's gone. And there's nothing they can do to stop her. Except pray for some help. Indeed, the ghosts of their ancestors come out. And they summon a great dragon spirit to go after Mulan. Except the statue for said great dragon was destroyed. Accidentally, by comic relief sidekick, Mushu, voiced by Eddie Murphy. To atone for this mistake and to regain his honor as a guardian, Mushu teams up with a lucky cricket to chase after Mulan and protect her. Like a gospel preacher, he enters into Mulan's life. Like a genie, he sticks by Mulan's side. Mulan enters the manly soldier camp under the alias Peng. And despite some awkward efforts to fit into this camp, Mulan becomes adaptable to the soldier training and is on her way to be China's greatest warrior. Will Mulan be able to save all of China from the clutches of the Huns? I think the majority of you already know the answer to that question, but this is the part where I analyze the film itself. You just can't analyze the summary! That's called summarizing the movie. Analyzing goes into the deeper thematic elements. Why didn't you do that before, you ninny? Most of the people have already seen the movie! I'm aware of that. I wanted to set up the mood. You're making me moody! You're moody! Shut up! Shh! 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 This film was always destined to be a success because... Being a film of the Disney Renaissance, it's a success by default. <laughs> Mulan may not be talked about as much as the likes of Beauty and the Beast and The Lion King, but it still made a lot of money in the box office, and is still a firm favorite in many Disney fans' hearts, particularly my friend Dr. Neiltipus. Disney took this well-beloved story from China and reinvented it to a new generation of people, particularly to entire families. And as always, Disney does a great job of establishing the fact that the first thing you think of when you think of certain stories and fairy tales, you think of the versions that Disney makes. They're very good at establishing those kind of stories to these generations. What's more, Mulan came out the year I was born! <laughs> the film and I have a lot in common. We are both currently 22 years old as of recording this. And the character of Mulan herself was quite a revolutionary character for Disney standards at the time. Not only was she a Disney princess that could kick some butt, but she also had parents that were still alive, even at the end of the movie. And hey, for a Disney movie, this is really ambitious in terms of its themes. It talked a lot about uh, war and genocide. There's some pretty 
dark scenes in here, and they don't shy away from some great details. There's a scene where you see a burnt village, and you see dead corpses everywhere. I'm surprised they still managed to get a U rating in that movie. And the film still has an epic tone. I mean, just look at the scene up in the snowy mountains. The use of uh, digital animation and 2D animation together make for some dynamic filmmaking. Mulan isn't well remarked as one of the greatest musicals, but some of the songs in here are fantastic. As always, geniusly written to match the theme and time of the film. Some particular highlights of the songs are Reflection and the many versions that come along with that song. I particularly love the violin version played by, I think her name was Vanessa. Please listen to the violin version of, of Reflection. It was mm, beautiful. Thank God for it. Of course, another highlight is I'll Make a Man Out of You, a song that no doubt many people have played during their workout, during the gym. The song has been paid homage to and parodied many times on the internet. Whenever you hear, be a man, you'll immediately think, you must be swift as a coursing wind. Be a man with all the strength of a great devil. Be a man. And the characters are quite likable. I especially liked uh, Mushu and the other camp soldiers, some of the comic relief characters. And sure, these characters could be a tad bit selfish at times, but they still tried their hardest in the war efforts. And all of them learned about honor and love and protection as the film progressed. Honor does play a vital part in this, and I'm glad they managed to delve into this because a cousin of mine recently recommended to me this book called The 3D Gospel, which talks about the various systems of the varying societies. And that Eastern countries have an honor and shame based system, whereas we in the West have a sort of innocence and guilt based system. In this theology book, Mark I. Pinsky makes comparisons to many women warriors and leaders all throughout history. Also pointing out that this, of course, had a huge impact on China. And some of the morals and spirituality of the film can be a bit questionable coming from the Disney company, but I suppose that's part of the puzzle with uh, figuring out myths from other countries. The film is, of course, very pretty to look at. It has a nice sort of watercolor aesthetic. And I like how they added in these particle effects akin to the Wind Waker, where the way things explode are more akin to Chinese art. And there's other details like that that um, are patterns throughout the film which captured the Chinese aesthetic. Also, when I watched it in my youth, I think there was a slightly questionable animation where the mouth movement didn't always match with the lip sync, with the voice acting rather. I don't know if that was just me, but I'm being a friend of it when we were younger. I don't know, but maybe it was to suit the Chinese dubbing. I have no idea, but uh, I watched it again and lip sync seemed about fine. So maybe I'm just uh, hallucinating or something. And I guess the only flaw with this movie is that the villain, whilst intimidating and has a cool design, is quite forgettable compared to some of the other Disney villains. I wish they could have done a bit more with this villain. There was a deleted scene in which he invaded the village which he committed genocide in, and he released some person's small bird. He took the person by his side, releasing his hawk as he was catching the bird, talking about his dominance over China, and then stabbing the guy to death as the hawk caught the bird. Which is probably dark, which is why it was deleted in the first place, I suppose. But if they had more scenes like that, we could have built up Shan Yu as more of a threat. I mean, he is a threat, but he's a forgettable threat. <laughs> not terrible, but just not as memorable as some of the other Disney villains. But that's kind of a nitpick compared to the quality of the movie. I give the original Mulan... A 10 out of 12. Pretty good. Now, of course, the live-action Mulan is going to be more true to the original myth story. Which Neil apparently doesn't like. But, God willing, we'll see where it goes. Scott Meyer signing out.